Welcome to The Peak, where becoming your best self is our goal. I'm Ashley Russo. On this week's episode, a nonprofit program for those who struggle with addiction. How St. Luke's gives support to a brand new mother. And a youth chorus that's been around for almost 30 years. All that and more coming up on The Peak. Pennsylvania has transformed and expanded into the go-to place for sports, restaurants, and community growth. At the head of the revitalization of Allentown is City Center and its president, J.B. Riley. Let's take a look at the impact City Center has truly made on this city. City Center Investment Corporation is a real estate development and management company dedicated to renewing cities to create vibrant urban communities. We are a private development real estate company that now also does a lot of property management and operations here in downtown Allentown. To date, we've developed probably over 3 million square feet. But what's really important to us is not just the buildings themselves, but the community and the cartilage between the buildings. We've developed public spaces, parks, common areas, the arts walk, and those areas have been deliberately created for places for people to gather. So one of the things that our team has been doing is bringing events like Rock the Walk down to Pocket Park, Phantom's Frenzy, so before every hockey game, you can pregame on the Arts Walk. We have the downtown Allentown Market. The market amongst itself has comedy night, has trivia night. And why are we doing that? We're doing that to build a sense of community. It is really important for downtowns across America to be strong and vibrant. And here in the Lehigh Valley, we're lucky enough to have three downtowns. We have Allentown, Bethlehem, and Easton. So here in downtown Allentown, we not only have developed five office buildings, but to date we've delivered over 10 apartment buildings. We are fully 100% leased. We have waiting lists. Our next brand new building called The Hive is coming online in April of 2022. And we already have people on those waiting lists to get into that building. We are no longer just developing in downtown Allentown. We're excited to announce that we are now going to be building an apartment building in downtown Easton. So we're really excited to be taking the expertise that we've been able to deliver in downtown Allentown now to downtown Easton. Giving back to the community is really part of our DNA. Our two co-founders, J.B. Riley and Joe Topper, it's really what they do personally. And so they bring that to the table. It's personally one of the reasons I joined the organization, that it's not just about the profits, but it's really about giving back. And we focus on three core areas, education, the arts, and overall community development. Here in the Lehigh Valley, the opportunities for fun, for success, for families to thrive is just endless. I don't find many places like the Lehigh Valley where you can jump and experience so many facets to life by just staying in one place. Not only does City Center physically build up these communities, but they also give back and support the areas that they serve. I'm Katie, and that was a peek at the Valley. I love Allentown. It has become such a vibrant and fun place. Thanks City Center for supporting an important part of growth in Eastern PA. Up next, an organization that provides life-changing resources to those on their journey to sober living. My message to people about addiction is addicts don't want to be this way. They, they need our compassion and they need our help and they need our understanding. Bridge Beyond Addiction is a local Lehigh Valley nonprofit and it was started by four mothers who unfortunately all had the experience of watching one of their children struggle with drug abuse. So Bridge Beyond Addiction offers the first month's rent 
and the intake fee for a patient coming out of treatment and entering into an approved sober living home. So Recovery Victory Home, we have found to be a very successful home for us to send our grantees. A Recovery Victory Home is a house for those that have been dealing with addiction, a Christ-centered structured program that's nine to 12 months long. There's a lot of different recovery homes that are out there. There are none that we saw doing it on this kind of structure level or the length of time or the kind of program that we have. I first met William actually through his CRS. His CRS contacted us and let us know that there's someone that he thought would be perfect for our home and he came in here to do the application with me, and that's how we got introduced and moved forward from there. Pastor Matthews is such a blessing. You know, he was asking me questions, and for the first time, I was able to, to be honest, you know, with myself, where I was just so used to lying. He has given me that chance, and uh, I'm so grateful for that. William, when he first started here, was very quiet and very shy and very much to himself. And one of the things that I had to tell William is that, you know, we really don't want you to be isolated into yourself. And I knew that was difficult for him, but I've seen him come out of his shell progressively more and more and more, being able to speak in front of others, speaking at house meetings, speaking in, in other churches and other places. I was always one who just felt that I could do everything alone. And I seen that's where it got me. But when I start seeing how other people started believing in me, you know, I just started needing to believe in myself. I would love to be able to help and, you know, give others a chance as well. If it ain't no more than sharing my stories with them or just sitting and listening to, you know, what's on their mind. Once my son passed in April of 2020, it became really important for me to help other moms get their kids the help they need. I can't save my son, but I know he's proud of me for doing this and I will continue to work to help others in his honor. You know, here, this is recovery, and you know, the help is here if you want it. Bridge Beyond Addiction is an extremely critical resource to have in this community, and these scholarships can really help get people back on their feet. Up next, we have a story that hits close to home for the Peak TV family. Stay tuned, you're watching The Peak. There really is nothing more exciting than bringing a baby into the world. Our very own Vice President of Production and Operations, Katie Santana, gave birth to a beautiful baby boy with the help of the St. Luke's team. Welcome, Cameron. People always say that babies don't come with instruction manuals, and that's true. I love that St. Luke's is there to make sure that, you know, we're, we're staying in line and, and growing the best we can. When I found out I was pregnant, I was honestly shocked. I went through a fertility specialist to get pregnant because I have PCOS, but when I got that pregnancy test back that it was positive, I was just happy, so happy. The role that we play in a pregnant patient's care is making sure that their pregnancy is, in fact, where it's supposed to be located, that it's healthy, that it's progressing normally. Knowing that there's a whole team of doctors at St. Luke's makes me feel really comfortable that, you know, there's lots of people checking on my test results, on my chart, on my numbers, on everything going on with me and the baby, and just knowing that whole team is there to take care of me made me feel really good. In our obstetric patients' lives, we are able to form bonds so that through the process, they feel like they have a really good support system outside of the support system they may have at home. And so they know they can always call us with questions or concerns. There's no question that's too silly, and we're happy to walk them through that. So when I found out that I was going to be induced at 37 weeks, um, it was nerve wracking, but I knew that that's what was best for me and for Cameron. I knew that I was in good hands and, you know, just being in the care of the doctors and under their watch was what was best. The day of childbirth is, of course, a unique day and it varies so much from patient to patient. And so our goal is for them to feel safe, for them to feel reassured and comfortable. Our goal is for them to feel that they have as much control as possible in order to get them through that process in the best way that they can reflect back on and feel really good about. We just want to facilitate their goals, all while keeping them safe. 
St. Luke's has so many resources to help you be ready to be a mother. Through the Baby and Me Center and through some other online resources, there are classes to teach you about giving birth and what to expect in the first few weeks and months of life once you bring the baby home, about breastfeeding, about all sorts of different topics that you can educate yourself on. We work through the process to assure our patients that they are in the best of hands by letting them know that we inherently trust our partners and, and that we're all on the same page. Whether whether it's me, who they may have seen for a bunch of their visits in their obstetric care, or a partner who potentially practices at a different office that they hadn't had a time to meet. We value each other and our, and our ability to provide excellent patient care. I'm so grateful for St. Luke's because they really took such good care of me from start to finish. I know that they'll continue to do so with me and my family for, for the foreseeable future. Now, we're, you know, we're five weeks in and parenthood is an amazing experience. It's a crazy journey, but I'm so happy that we're, we're doing it together. Cameron loves to be out going on walks with us and meeting new people. We're so happy to have him. Joining me today is Dr. Diane Jacobitz. She's the Regional Medical Director of Pediatrics for the St. Luke's Physician Group. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Jacobitz. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Tell me why it's important to establish care specifically with a pediatrician, even before you have a baby. So it's really important to identify a pediatrician because a pediatrician is someone who's going to hopefully be with you and your family for the entire length of your child's childhood, which starts at birth and goes all the way till age of 18. So this is really, really important because you want to choose someone who's going to, you're going to get along with, you're going to have a rapport with, and that your children are going to grow with. When you first have a baby and you see that pediatrician, you see them pretty regularly. What are some of the things that you and the other pediatricians at St. Luke's are trying to establish with new parents in particular as they're learning how to adjust to being parents? So in the first year of life, you do see your pediatrician quite a bit for well visits. Um, we see babies every couple of months initially, um, and there are many important things that go into those visits. There are certainly many educational components. So we are teaching families about how to feed your baby, how to care for your baby. What are the things you need to watch out for? How do you make your home safe for your child? Um, and those things change as children get older. So each visit is very important to establish those things. And what are some of the main concerns as a pediatrician? Uh, you mentioned safety items and health and wellness. What about vaccinations and even well visits as they get into those school age years? How important is that to kind of keep up with, not just go when they're first born and then maybe you go back because you're required to at kindergarten, but why keep up throughout? Yeah, it's really important because at each visit, there's an established group of items that we look at. So we look at growth. So we plot your, your child's growth on a growth curve and make sure that their diet and um, nutrition is adequate and what it should be. We look at development. So is your child developing and meeting all those developmental milestones? And as they get older, we look at school performance and how are they doing in school and what other supports might they need? We look at a child's behavioral and mental health as well as they are getting older, which is really important. And, it, and especially now with COVID, that mental health component is extremely important. And what is your approach and what do you try to instill among the group and the other pediatricians at St. Luke's when they're establishing that relationship with a parent, especially a first time parent, there are so many questions and so many unknowns. And I know we've often talked about those first few days right at home are really scary in a lot of ways. And you, as much as you think, you know, you don't know until you're there and you're alone and you're the parent of a child. So what is your interaction and, and, and I guess approach to patients when you first get to know them? So we're looking to um, first establish that rapport with a family, talking to them about the health of their baby. The first visit in the office is really focused on how they're feeding and really the nuts and bolts of how you care for an infant. And then being available to our family. So we have someone on call all the time so that if a parent does have a question, no matter how silly it is, it's not silly to us. Those are, those are the times you should pick up the phone and call your doctor. There's always someone on call if it's after hours. Uh, we do have extended hours in many of our offices too to accommodate families if they need hours after work or even on the weekends. So those are important features to know about your pediatrician's office. 
That's really important and great news, Dr. Jacobitz, for all the parents out there to know that there is someone always on call and any question is a valid question when it comes to the care of your child. So thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate the time. Stay tuned. You're watching The Peak. Bill Childs, the creative mind of Kitchen Magic, is an old friend and respected colleague, and I was able to sit down with him to talk about the best entertainment in the Valley. Let's find out what Bill loves most about our region. Welcome to Unscripted with Russo, everyone. I am being joined by an old friend of mine, someone who many of you probably have had the pleasure of getting to know over the years in a variety of roles, Bill Childs, who is now the creative director at Kitchen Magic. Bill, thanks for being with me. Great to be here, Ashley. I want to ask you about where you grew up, right? You're a local guy. Well, I grew up in the Lehigh Valley. I grew up in Allentown, born and raised. I spent all my formative years in, in downtown Allentown. When I moved here, I was, I was a stay-at-home mom with two kids, and... I really never imagined that this is where I would be or where I would be going and, and what I'd be mm -hmm. doing. But I have to tell you, I find working in a significant way in the area in which you live and you give back and your kids go to school and you go to the market is so rewarding. Is there a favorite thing that you like to do in Allentown? And if so, what is that thing and why do you love it? The Celtic uh, Classic in downtown Bethlehem. That is hands down my favorite event of the year. They're coming back this year, so I'm excited to go back and the music, the food, the energy that's down there, I love that event. So that's that's my favorite event. Certainly there are epicenters of creativity and advertising and things like that. Why do you believe it's important to work in the community that you want to live in? Well, I mean, I, I wanted to see this area do well. I believed in it. When you grow up here, you kind of get a sense of the community that's here and, and you want to see it do well. I mean, New York is close. Philly is close. I mean, those places can always be reached. But I just, I wanted to kind of see what I could do here in the Valley to kind of plant that flag and just kind of really grow. Well, Bill Childs, I would say it's very fair to say that you have inspired many, many people. We are uh, so grateful for your time and this conversation. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Glad to do it. Thank you all so much for listening. Until next time. For the full interview, visit youtube.com slash the peak TV. And don't forget to subscribe to Unscripted with Russo on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Love catching up with friends and seeing how they've grown in their fields and how they inspire others. Up next, a chorus for children who love to sing and are seeking musical enrichment with a twist of history. Take a look. A teacher of mine once told me that to sing is to allow yourself to be vulnerable. I love to teach music because I just feel that it really touches students on so many levels beyond just the subject material. It's emotional, it is physical, it is intellectual. The Bach Choir is the oldest Bach Choir in the United States and has been in the Lehigh Valley for 130 plus years. I saw that there was a need in the Lehigh Valley. There was no youth chorus up here. So in coming to the Lehigh Valley, we looked for a partner. We had done a number of projects with the Bach Choir and had wonderful experiences with Greg. And so everything unfolded from there. We are the performing educational program for the Bach Choir for youth. Belcancho gives an opportunity for learning and self-growth in terms of children being able to explore topics that are very diversified. Anything from history to local tradition, anything from pop culture to things that they may have never heard about from places they've never been. The chorus originally started just to provide an artistic outlet for youth and children. But as time has gone on, it has come to become much, much more. So our philosophy now and our approach is really looking at how music builds better humans. 
It's really cool that we get to learn about the history of it and get to sing about it as well. It helps make the learning really fun. To be in bel canto, you don't have to be a top-notch musician. Honestly, you just have to have a passion for music. And I feel like a lot of people do. Sometimes people don't even realize how passionate they are about music until they experience something like this choir. The kind of youth that comes to sing with bel canto is someone who is curious, who has an interest in a lot of different things, who loves music and loves to sing. There is no prerequisite as far as musical training. We teach them how to sing. We teach them vocal technique. We teach them the musicianship skills that they need for reading choral music and all of that. And our youth come from all over the area. We have people coming from as far north as Strasbourg and as far south as North Wales. So they come from a very wide area to sing with us. So I think it's a great way to explore their world, past, present, and even future, their hopes to express their personal opinions, to express their concerns in the world that they live in. And it's just a great way to build confidence. So as they perform with their friends and they reach out with their music to the community, they feel engaged with that community and influential as well. I urge, even if you have just the smallest bit of curiosity, to just try it out, because Honestly, I didn't know too much about it before I joined, but I joined and now I'm never gonna forget about it. We often talk about the power of music and how music expresses the human spirit and how it moves other people and the power that you have with your voice when you sing and how significant it is to use your voice and that through music and through singing in particular, you can connect with people who are not like you you can connect with people you don't know. There's nothing more special than looking out at the audience and seeing people weeping because of something they've connected to when you sung to them. I think the most rewarding thing as a teacher is seeing when the kids realize how far that they have come. So that's the rewarding moment. Like, yes, we made it there together. What a talented group of singers. I love what these children can learn when they all lift their voices together. I'm Ashley Russo, thanks for watching. To learn more about anything from today's show, go to our website at thepeaktv.com. And remember, every day is an opportunity to be your best self. This is The Peak. If, oof. What a talented group of singers. No, after midnight. Portions of this program were paid for by St. Luke's University Health Network. The Peak TV is a production of ASR Media. Like what you saw? Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss another video. To see more of The Peak TV, check out our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and catch us on WFMZ Channel 69.